Team number two of the day, I'm Jason Gobo, taking a look at the New Orleans Saints um, here at Fantasy Football Cafe. You know, some are knocking them down this year. Um, you know, I like a couple options. you got to like the Saints. It's still a decent option. So they're not going to be the huge offensive scoring, you know, fantasy team that we all loved in the past. But, uh, you know, still got some nice guys to take a look at, um, especially, you know, in the deeper leagues. Um, a few names to mention here. Um, you know, Drew Brees led the league in attempts last season, um, but did finish out of the top five in fantasy quarterbacks, so you can definitely tell he slowed down a little bit in that department. It was a tough year for Brees. Uh, still put up, you know, good fantasy stats, but I think he's going to take a little bit of a drop this year. Um, so, you know, speculation on the Saints has been they're going to put a more balanced offense on. I think that's going to be the case. Um, but I still think there's going to be plenty of attempts for the running game and the passing game. It, really, everything kind of hinders on... Um, how these games play out. Are the Saints going to be behind? Is the defense going to be improved a little bit to the point where they can play a more balanced style? Or is Breeze going to have to you know, throw the team and try and carry, carry the team on his back and putting up points on the board? Because um, that could be very well be the case too. So um, looking at the offseason, you know, they, they spent uh, some draft picks on the line, um, signed C.J. Spiller, you know, traded Graham for a center, an elite center. Um, so that, that definitely shows that they're possibly going to be moving towards a heavier run game. Um, not that it's going to finish top 10 attempts, but as far as touch, touches go from Ingram on the ground to Spiller in the backfield, you got to like both guys there. Um, you know, Breeze lost his favorite target in Graham. Uh, it's going to leave a little bit of a gap in the end zone with a passing game, um, but it's going to set up Ingram for more chances. And I think because Ben Watson and Josh Hill are both kind of up in the air is, is how many touches and targets they're going to get. Um, you know, both of them are off my radar for fantasy this season. Because um, I, th I really thought Josh Hill was going to emerge the way the buzz was building before the season. I definitely hopped on, but it doesn't look like it's going to be the case. But it, obviously it's going to be something to keep an eye on during, during the season there. So, um, you know, Breeze has got a, a pretty iffy core, if you think about it. Um, yeah, Cook's... You know, he's going to be the wide receiver one, but a 5'10", you know, guy on, uh, you know, a lighter weight scale is going to be a, a wide receiver one. Colston's not the guy he used to be. Um, and then they don't have a, a tight end, so I think you got to knock him down just a little bit. Uh, like I said, Colston, um, up in the age, the production has been down, been steadily going down. Um, you know, because he's going to be the number two option with Breeze in that offense, he's a worth worth a look in, in deep leagues, and I mean deep, deep leagues, um, you know, but nothing more than the streamer in, in a 10-12 to 12 man league, maybe a bench guy at the most, um, just because, you know, he hasn't been really producing. Um, Cooks looks to be a lock among the receiving core, uh, going to see a ton of targets, great PPR league, I think that new receptions is probably a pretty good floor for him, um, or probably a pretty good ceiling, that's probably where he's going to be at, and uh, for someone ranked as highly as he is, um, you know, he's not, I don't find him to be a dominant threat in the, in the red zone I, or in the end zone because I don't think um, in the red zone he's going to get a lot of touches, first of all, and I just don't think um, he's going to have to have a lot of luck, a lot of yards after the catch, um, you know, things like that to get into the end zone. While I do see him finding the end zone, you know, six, seven times, it's tough for me to see him any higher than that, um, and that's an issue with where he's ranked at, but... Um, Still a pretty safe floor for him, but Cooks, I'm not buying the upside quite yet. Running game, it was all set for Mark Ingram to be a real heavy workload guy, um, but C.J. Spiller now there, going to be a receiving guy. Um, that's kind of been the case in the past. You know, you saw Pierre Thomas get out of the backfield, Sproles when he was there. It's always been there in New Orleans. Um, and it's kind of shifted a little bit of of uh, focus away from Ingram, but, um, you know, touchdown game Ingram's going to produce. You're going to get double-digit touchdowns. Without Graham, he's going to be the focus point in the red zone. Um, tough runner, finishes the ball, gets in the end zone. Did that a lot last year, so you got to like that. Um, he's going to you know, be around 200 in attempts, 220. Um, I don't see him going much higher than that. Um, like I said, a pretty safe floor, 1,000 yards. Going to flirt with that number, and 10 scores is pretty likely as well, so you got to like that there. Uh, but I also think you could find some inconsistency because if the Saints are down, you're going to find Spiller on the field a lot more you know, in the receiving game, and that could be an issue um, for certain weeks that happens more and more. So that's, that's one thing to keep an eye on and keep in mind. Um, Spiller's going to benefit from the passing game. 
Obviously, moving from the Bills to the Saints is, is a huge move. Um, so, nice value there. I really like my PPR leagues. You know, it's no shocker. Um, I think a 1,000 yards of total offense is pretty doable for Spiller as long as he stays healthy. And, you know, he'll be around five to six touchdowns. Going to work well in the, sp- the screen game um, and going to balance out Mark Ingram pretty well. So, you got to like him there. So, overall, a few stable options in New Orleans. Um, and then a couple guys to look at in deeper leagues. But, um, I still think they could be a little bit shaky from a consistency standpoint um, for fantasy.